Welcome back, everybody. I am Digital Illustrator Mike Metz, and uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing another paint over slash critique. Uh, so today, I received this image here on the right from Luke Cornwall, and uh, and he wrote to me, "Hey, Mike, I did a new practice painting yesterday, and any advice, criticism is appreciated. Feel free to be harsh." Famous last words. No. <laughs> uh, he says, for this piece, I tried using the chalk brush, but ended up using the soft round again. Uh, I tweeted earlier about how I need to find the balance from each, the painted texture look of the chalk brush without it looking muddy, and the softness of the soft round with it having no texture and no defined edges. Uh, if you could talk about that, that would be really cool. Here's the reference I used you know, on the left. Uh, he said he edited the contrast and the uh, and changed it to grayscale because he's working without colors, uh, so he can practice values. Okay, uh, so let's get started. Hang on, my headphones are knotted here. Eh, whatever, I'll deal with it. Uh, anyway, so in looking at this first, um, it's it's definitely instantly recognizable. I saw your painting first without any of the reference, and I, I knew that uh, that it was Tom Hardy. It looks like Tom Hardy from Bronson. I guess I never saw that movie. Um, anyway, so it you can definitely tell who it is. Uh, the proportions are, are pretty accurate for the most part. Um, there are a couple things uh, that that I would talk about. Uh, as a way to, you know, to strengthen the piece. Uh, and I definitely see what you mean uh, as far as uh, you trying to balance the, the soft round brush with the, uh, the chalk brush that I use. Um, soft, brown, uh, soft round brush, it's, it's a pitfall. I mean, I guess it's, it's a, definitely a stylistic choice. Uh, a lot of people use it. But I think that it's uh, it's definitely overused with digital painting, and it, it just makes the whole thing kind of look airbrushy. It takes away from the the definition and, and the structure of the piece. Um, but I definitely get it. There's a reason people use it. It's you know it's been around for a long time, and it will most likely continue to be heavily used. But uh, I definitely appreciate you're trying to expand. Uh, with you know the harder brushes using the chalk brush which is my personal favorite um, so I did a paint over of this um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show mine first uh, and then I will go in specifically and talk about the things that you could do to improve this piece so without uh, further ado and I'm gonna keep zoomed in you've got a, a wide painting here I don't want to zoom out too much because I want everybody to be able to see the detail. Um, so this is the original that uh, Luke submitted. Here is my paint over of Tom Hardy. And uh, so now I'm going to go in and specifically talk about some of the things to uh, improve. And I'm going to turn mine on and off for the sake of contrast. Um, so first things first. I, I think either in the last video or one of the other ones... You know, I really harped on how important it is to take your time with the drawing stage. Um, I don't know how much time you spent on the drawing, uh, but there are some structural inaccuracies which uh, nailing those would really take this thing to the next level. Um, I think a piece like this, working from the reference, inherently is really, really tough. Uh, because you have such high contrast, it's hard to really see the form uh, on its own. So for the most part, in as uh, either a beginner or novice or even someone with a lot of experience, I would advise uh, avoiding pieces like this. There's just too much room for interpretation and there's too much margin for error without really being able to see uh, the structure and the anatomy as a whole. Um, so, yeah, first things first, I would take more time on the, the original drawing to get the structure right. You really have, uh, you need to have a really strong foundation in anatomy. Um, and I'll show you 
you know, I'll make a new layer on top of yours and talk about some of the things that I, I mean. Um, so first things first, uh, first of all, I blew this, this image up uh, big time. I, I don't know what resolution you were working on, uh, Luke, but I definitely advise cranking it pretty high up. It just gives you more flexibility. Uh, if you do have a slower machine, it, it can start to, to lag if you go too high, but uh, if you can pull it off, I would definitely recommend uh, working at a higher resolution. So first things first, I'm going to do some basic discussion of anatomy. Uh, the brow ridge. The brow ridge is the most important part of any you know portrait or face or, or anything to that effect. Uh, and the reason for that is it structurally sets the tone for the entire piece. You know, if the brow ridge is off, the rest of the structure is going to be really hard to get accurate. Um, and in order to get an accurate brow ridge, you need to know the structure. You need to know the structure of the skull. Um, so just looking at this, you know, his brow ridge is going to come up like that. The nose attaches here. And I'm not going for realism. I'm just, you know, illustrating the structure here. Uh, this is where the brow ridge, you know, comes back in. And then it juts back out kind of like this. You know, I'm doing these lines kind of to show things in quasi perspective. Uh, and then you've got, I think it goes maybe a little bit further back for him. And then you've got the, the kind of spherical protuberance of the skull. Uh, you got the side planes. Um, and anyway, the, the bottom part of the eye socket goes around here. So I'm going to define this on both sides for you. Um, and that'll really help you, you know, getting the structure down will really help you to to see better, especially if you have a really high contrast reference photo like this. Even if you can't see the plane changes here, knowing the anatomy will help you uh, to see it for yourself. Um, and then the side planes of the nose. So the, the nose, there's the, the bone part of the skull ends around here, okay? So there's a plane here, and then it picks up with cartilage. You've got one set of cartilage here, and then you've got cartilage for the tip of the nose, and then the wings of the nose. Um, so it's really those uh, one, two, three, four, five, I guess, side plane, flare of the nostril, this piece of cartilage, this piece of cartilage, and you know the bridge, and then the top. It's those different pieces of the nose that, you know, even looking at him, it's kind of hard because it starts to blend together. But if you look closely, you can see the subtle plane changes. Uh, and then you've got the muzzle, this is called. Um, so the mouth, I've definitely spoken about this in other videos, both the mouth region and the eyes. Uh, a lot of people have a tendency to draw them as flat objects on the head, but they're actually, it's like taking a rubber ball. So if we're taking this mouth region and we got a rubber ball here, the mouth is kind of like a slit in that rubber ball, okay? And when it opens, it's like the ball, the slit, you know, stretching the, the slit of the ball open. Okay, uh, and then you've got the chin here, which extends back here towards the jaw. You've got your cheekbones. Cheekbones is a really, uh, another really important piece. You've got your cheekbones here, which extend, branch down to where the ears attach. Okay, um, I hope it, this is clear. It might not be, I don't know. Um, these are the basic plane changes. You've got the jaw that extends here, uh, and then picks up around here. If you can make sense of this at all, props to you. Um, <laughs> so that's that's the basic structure of all this. Um, and talking about the you know the rubber ball thing, it's going to be the same thing. Maybe I should pick a different color here. 
going to be the same thing with your eye. So you've got the, you know, the eyeball that sits in here. Imagine it as a rubber ball. You know, you got the the iris here, and then you've got the eyelid. on both sides so it's like that rubber ball the bottom of it you start to lose it maybe because it you know it uh, juts back out in this part of the the eye socket and the cheekbone and you might lose this top part too especially with someone like him uh, where he's got this flesh he's got these hooded eyes um, which overlays the top part of the lid um, but anyway another important thing to notice is if you look at the reference, you can see there are some subtle plane changes on the uh, on the eyelids themselves. For example, you've got your let's use that color again. You've got your what? Oh, this is in grayscale. RGB. Um, you've got your eyelid here, and then it recedes. So there's a bottom down facing plane here. Okay. And conversely, there's an up-facing plane here, and then the bottom of the lid. So it's really important to play those up. Um, so when I show my finished piece, you know, I'm definitely making sure to hit all of those plane changes. You've got the up-facing plane uh, on the eyelid, the bottom eyelid, the down-facing plane here. Where are we with time? We're about 12 minutes. Um, so plane changes, and you can actually see with my brushwork, uh, I'm actually illustrating all of the plane changes. So you've got the brow ridge here, um, and I am, with my brushwork, showing how those planes go. And then you've got uh, the brow ridge recedes here, you've got that sort of spherical mass, um, you can see how I rendered the different pieces of the nose. Um, the side planes of the nose. Uh, so another important thing, if you're going for a likeness, as you are here with Tom Hardy, you want to pay attention. You know, every person has their, their key distinguishing features that set them apart. And for Tom Hardy... He's got those kind of crazy looking eyes. Um, so that's something really important you want to hit. He's got very distinct eyes. Um, he's got a very distinct brow ridge where he has these, you know, the little eyebrow. I don't know if they're scars or whatever. I think maybe he shaves them in reality. But anyway, um, you know, the most important things with him, his distinguishing features are his eyes, his kind of crazy looking eyes, his prominent brow ridge. Uh, where you've got the upper peak, the outer part of uh, the eyebrows here. Uh, you've got his distinct looking nose. I know it's hard to really make it out because it's an upshot, but he's got a pointed nose um, where this part right here juts out more than any of the other parts. It's kind of a slope uh, from the side. I think it, it would look like here. So here's the bridge, and then he's got this little bit here and then you got the nostrils anyway um, ah! I'm on one layer uh, and another thing are, are his lips he's got very distinct lips um, which I think you definitely you hit upon here with your painting uh, I would just make sure because there are plain changes on the lips too if you can see um, you've got kind of you know if this is in color this is like the pink part of the lip, and then there's another piece of that ridge here. So you can see that there's actually, you know, two separate pieces. This is the, the you know, the red part, and then you've got the flesh-colored part where it kind of wraps around. you got the underplane here, uh, and then the, the prominence of the chin. If you look closely, there's actually a couple pieces. Um, you've got the, this top plane here. You've got a couple side planes, too. And then sort of a, a clef right here, the dark part. Um, what else? What else can I touch upon? Um, 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 um. Let's try and wrap this up.
in a bit. I'm gonna undo all these changes I made. Probably should have put all that stuff on its own layer. Um, so yeah, what I try to do is kind of do these this angular brushwork or hatching to even though it's it's simple, there's not a whole lot of contrast on the face itself. I use my brushwork to hint uh, the contours and the volume of the planes. Let's pull in here. Uh, another really important thing that I do, I constantly flip my work horizontally like this uh, and the reference because as artists, most artists, we have a tendency to uh, maybe slam things or have things slightly inaccurate. So one of the best things you can do is, uh, I have this set to a hotkey, but you can do image, uh, where is it? Image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal. And just do that constantly as you're going through your workflow to make sure your proportions and things are accurate. Um, eyes, I always like to talk about eyes. Eyes are always the focal point on the face. So you wanna make sure, yours looks so, uh, your eyes look okay and that they're both pointing the, f the, the same way, which is great. I've always, for whatever reason, had a lot of trouble with that. Um, so I need to really make sure that my eyes are facing the same way and that these specular highlights uh, are consistent with that. Um, because if you throw the specular highlight in the wrong place, it can make the eye look like it's looking in a different direction. Um, another thing, with mine, I added a little bit of thickness to his neck. You're losing that a little bit um, because you've got the uh, uh, sternomastoid muscles which stretch from behind, slightly behind the ear, uh, behind the, yeah, behind the ear, and it goes all the way down to about here, where you got your clavicle. Um, and his are really prominent. That's another really uh, distinguishing feature of him. Um, 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 what else can I hit? You did a nice job with your cast shadow here. I would also make sure that you... Uh, Play a little more with the contour of the shoulders. Another distinguishable feature of Tom Hardy is he's got those really big uh, traps, the really big prominent trapezius muscles. So I would, you know, make those prominent as well. Um, yeah, don't don't be afraid to get a little loose and sketchy. I, I know that you have a tendency, Luke, to uh, to rely on the soft round. But I think especially sometimes it might help to do what I did here and kind of have those angular marks just so you can practice getting those plane changes um, because you really need them. It's, it's the most important part and it's the biggest thing uh, as an artist that you can tell whether someone's just kind of fudging it and eyeballing off the reference or whether they actually know what they're doing. Um, so I would, I would definitely study your anatomy um, I know Andrew Loomis has some really great books on uh, how to draw faces, how to draw the head and the skull, uh, and I think they're all public domain, um, so I would definitely invest in those. Well, not invest because they're free, but, you know, take time to, to learn the structure, uh, and that really sets the foundation for everything else. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much all I want to talk about here. Just keep practicing. Um, if you are new to this sort of thing, make sure if you're working from reference that you, you use reference that's going to set you up for success. You don't want crazy contrast like this, um, because it's just going to make it too hard. There, there, there's too much guesswork where unless you, like I said, unless you really have some type of a mastery of the anatomy and the plane changes. It's just, it's too much work. So work with something that's a little bit easier to read and just keep practicing. Um, so Luke, thank you for, uh, for letting me work on your image here. It's been a lot of fun to, to do this. Hope you got something out of it. Everybody else who's watching, I hope that you guys something that you guys got something out of it. And, uh, that's all I got for this time. If you guys have any other questions or comments or things you want to see, feel free to uh, let me know, comment on YouTube, 
uh, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or wherever I am and uh, be happy to work on that. You know, I enjoy doing some of these freebies. The ultimate goal, obviously, is to, to bring you guys into my education business. Um, but I, I feel like it's important to give back a little bit just because if you don't know who I am uh, and you don't know how I teach, it's important to give a taste. And, you know, I'm all about the community. So I love doing this for you guys. You know, that's why I teach in the first place is to, uh, to help you guys improve. And in doing it, in doing demos like this, I'm constantly learning as well. Um, so that's all I got for you this time. Uh, comments, whatever you got, leave them for me and, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.